also checked on you some it's going to take some time um, but the paramount chief did not appear alone you can see some people behind him and I, I, it's very important we know you it's very very important for the record so chairman with your indulgence whilst we wait for has very senior <laughs> royal <laughs> relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and even in their chief kingdom as well. So, <laughs> and so the chairman's status must also be properly defined. <laughs> no, which district or which region or which section he command. Okay. But I was, he introduced himself to me when he came to my office. Okay. That he was a police commander based at the police headquarters. And I so uh, I asked him what is where does he know me? Mm. And he told me that during the time of political campaign twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen, I used to come to war with the President, the vice president, and the allergy shop. And I know that, yeah, if he says so, it's just true. Okay. Who is the other individual apart from uh, uh, Commissioner Sari that was on tape? Uh, apart from Commander Sari, uh, there was one man also later joined. Call Commander uh, COP Mensan. Okay. That he's on leave now, prior to his retirement. Yeah, he was also part of it. Yes. Mm. So you were only three? Then later, when the meeting were going on, one, I didn't see the person, it was on phone. One, uh, JP. J -P. JP, who is also a, a police superintendent mm -hmm. at the police headquarters, but I haven't seen him. We, he was he talked to me on phone, and uh, I listened to him on phone. Okay. So, where is the location of your office? Where this play? I did that the tape into place. Uh, my office at Osu. Osu. And get direct opposite Osu Police Station. So you want to tell this uh, committee that all that was said on the tape is valid? Oh, it's valid. Okay. So members of the committee, he has authenticated the tape that is identified. Set up this committee has answered the first question with regards to the work of the committee that we are to ascertain the veracity or otherwise of the leak tape mm. and everything on the tape has been confirmed by the witness before us yes is that the case that is so close. very well thank you so that's not an issue and then the second one is to investigate the conspiracy to remove the current inspector general of police that's the second one thank you so chief um, do you record all your conversations with people who call you? No, Mr. Chairman. Um, so what led to the recording of this particular conversation? Mr. Chairman, the present issues that they know or they are saying either I don't go to tell the president and then me and my party suffer for it. Now, if I also go to talk to the president, it's good to tell him the right thing. And since I cannot keep everything they were talking to me, at that, uh, at that point, it was very, very good to record them so that I know President, if I tell him something, 
He will follow you and tell the truth. Next time you will not give me respect. You know him and I know him. So the best thing was to ensure that when I tell him, he asked me, are you sure? I said, well, this is the tape. I don't want to miss it. Did you, you listen to it. And then I think that is the best thing I could have done. Oh, I seen enough election. One of my children, Kwate Bugri, called me and said, Daddy, one police officer wanted me to bring him to your office. And I asked him for what? He said, he can't tell me I will bring him to him, to you, then maybe he will tell you why he wants you for him. So I said, okay. He can come with him. So it is Asari who came with that my son. When Asari came and introduced himself to me, that is a police com uh, commander Asari. He wanted to come and see me. And I said, okay, here I am. You can go ahead. And what he said was what I just going to say. He said, they want me to come, he want to come and see me so that I could talk to the president. And that what is going on is not the best. So to talk to the president about what? He said, the, the IGP is not with the government or the, pre, uh, the party. If we want to use him for 2024 20, elections, we cannot reach the eight that we are talking about. So I asked him why. He said it's an NDC. I said, how come NDC will become IGP? Why you waited, he been given the post, and this time of the day, you are coming to talk. Have you mentioned it? Have you seen the, the, uh, the president? He said he's a party member. He's been in this party. And that message has reached the president. Mm -hmm. But the president is not interested in changing the IGP. So they have already sent so many people to him. And at the long last, somebody said, maybe if I could pick a word, I could also give a word to the president. Maybe he will listen. And I said, okay, me, I can't listen, I can't go unless you let me convince that the man is an NDC. If I go and tell a say without knowing and later I discover that what I'm telling the president is uh, it's not true, the president will not have respect for me. And I said, Chief. Final member of the party, a party official. I don't want to go and talk something that later they say I see, and it's not true. Then he started telling me a lot about the IGP, his up and doing. He even told me that this assume of election. If we allow IGP to go there, we will lose the election. And I became scared. If IGP doesn't go there to vote, but if we can go there and we we'll lose the election, then my, my annals were shaken. So he told me he's bet me. I should wait and see. Election is coming in 10 days' time, 
And with this IGP present there, who, who, who went about getting nothing. So I listened to him. I said I'll go and tell the president, but before I go, I have to make sure what I'm going to tell him. It is the truth and nothing by the truth. <clears throat> so I resettled him with a different day. Then I contacted some people in the police. I said, some members of the police council. I said, ah, this is what some police officer has come to tell me about our IGP. And you are a member of the police council. Have you seen? He also gave me his opinion on that, but he disagreed with what Commander Asari said. I tried to call the interior minister. He didn't pick my call. When I was the chairman of the Northern Regional Party, I used to have a bodyguard. I called that bodyguard who claimed he worked with uh, the IGP in Greater Accra region as a police commander there, and he also gave me how he knew the, the IGP. So I said, fine. And then the second time he came, and uh, I listened to them. He told me that he had got somebody who is more qualified and who is also true party member, and that man can take over from the IGP. So he want the person to come. So I said, okay, you can bring the person. So the second time he came to meet me, he came with the person, and that is the person, C.O.P. Mesa. So I asked C.O.P. Mesa, I do you remember if I, you've come to my office before? You say yes. I say, ah, but then I knew you when you were telling me you had somebody. I didn't know that it was you. And that means you are really good. So I also listened to that man. And that man also talked. And in fact, I was scared if our government and party should have an IGP who can hold meeting with your mama and then you see their meeting, then we are in Taibong. <coughs> so I listened to them and I said, okay, you will need to come back. So I was also doing it while consulting some other people what I'm hearing and what they've come to tell me to go and tell the old man. I even promised Commander Asari that if he himself will even come, then I'll go with him to the present so that the, I will sit down, sit down <coughs> so that he will not talk to the present directly. But he told me that day he was traveling. <coughs> so he wanted one GB, who should say police superintendent, to come and join me, he will equally say the things they know about the IGP. There is a wind coming. Wow. And it's not 2019. It will begin after 2020 going. After 2020, there's a wind coming. There's a wind coming. Mm -hmm. The Arab uprising mm -hmm. is coming. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. By the youth. It's coming not just to Ghana, West Africa, all over. If we don't do something, if we don't give them hope, that's why I'm going back to the schools. Speak and to I'm, them. And I'm engaging the youth again. Because if we don't give them hope and a sense of direction, the most dangerous thing in life is to fight somebody who has nothing to lose. Mm. They don't have wives. They don't have children. They don't have cars. They don't have lands. They have no hope, nothing to live for. They don't mind dying. 
So our politics is treading on dangerous grounds. It is Africa, because I see it everywhere, and it's very scary and very worrying. That will, will the wind start from Ghana? I don't know, but it's coming. It's coming to West Africa after 2020. Yeah, after 2020 going, 2021, 2022, three, four going. It, if something don't change to give their youth hope, I'm telling you. And I, there is a wind. We have some significant achievements, which have addressed the concerns of the Ghanaian people. I'm very confident that we're going to the election with good people to the this. But the most, 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 there are concerns that the campaign has led to a lot of ritual and a lot of hostility. What's your concerns about such claims? I believe in the end of the day, a competitive process, the party will, will, will coalesce around the new leader who will then be able to lead us in a unified manner to the election. Mr. President, please, are you telling the delegates to vote for Sam Asperas? These are some of the claims. Can you retreat that point? The last time you cleared that, you are not supporting any aspirants. If I've cleared it, why are you bringing it up again? <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not convinced. Some say they are not convinced by the message. They want you to uh, walk the talk. But at the same time, there are some calling for me to endorse their candidates. There are some who are calling for me to endorse their candidates. I haven't endorsed anybody. The, the election is not mine. If I had, I would decide. I don't decide. It's the delegates in our party that decide. Mr. President, Ghanaians say they are not happy with the way conditions are. They are tired. They are it's suffering. Difficult. It's difficult. I'm, I'm the first to admit it. I've said it several times. I'm the first to admit it. At the end of the day, when, we, uh, when we, the moment comes, the Ghanaians will reflect on who does and get us out of these difficulties and take us to the next thing. That is the new patriotic party. Fail MPP people. They should vote against them. Anybody who does not care about the ordinary people in the party, vote against them. If they give you money, take it. If they ask you to swear, swear, but don't vote. You swear, but you don't vote? Yeah. But, but that can be dangerous. Yeah, but nothing will happen to you. <laughs> Just you are superstitious. That's why you think something. Nothing will happen. Chop the money and use your brains. Time war. MPP, December 2016. Na Ghana, ako IMF. Na ni zivua di yako IMF. 2016 na. Pena kufa adu besho wono. Na ni zivua sa di yako IMF. Enti ne si sa bano sa me ye juma. Ni ye piefri IMF ho. Unfortunately, ye piefri IMF ho ha. E ni ye me fufu obi yusho. E sa abe sisi ye. Na. Na se ye. Ya sa ako IMF. Ok. E ni zivua. E sa ye ye bo se. Se. Pena kufa adu ka se. Ye yanko IMF da. E na. Vice President can say ye mko. Kenofuretta can say ye mko. Eni yako edi. Omo winye vi. Asamna ba ya nfad. Gana fo bibi ni enti asi enti. Ebi mi voko ya ye ye mshe ye. Alanche matin. Onon kwa ni minister. O sodi jina ye be chile chile gana fo mu se. Ya anom. Anka nye ye pe. Si ye beko IMF. Ne mum. Endi si fo. O se ne omo obo ne di. Omo so omo ni hokwa ye. Because di edin kano. Omo ne di ye kwa hokra afes. Asa na yenye bobo modin ye pie fri ho. Na nye ma nko yi. Na yasa nko hwa. Two things. E nye ya pedi ye se ye be se ye ko IMF. Nye so on pesa wabe ko IMF ha. O si se o nye ma e kwenye bisu kwenye bisu kwenye bisu. Ala nche ma tiye ha junye o di tu gane se. Me di ye ma junye ni se. Ye ma ye ni ko private sector. Nye developo private enterprise. E ni business. E ye agriculture. E ye industry. E ye exporter. Chances are that. Yeye ni yasi basi huko IMF. Na tu IMF no Ghana yeye members atesa welfare club uye member na utuo udius na uhuwa chelo na uhulu baadhi ya wofa adi yeye utuo udius uko jibio uko jibio udius ni ubeti ya atesa huo chelo ba na utuo wenye nchi ya uko kwa jiki kakra na wodi abe swatu swatu eno no endi mimi muawo ema wun developo economy ba dube dui tia uhu kaka kakra na wodi sio Uwa hengao, nefei ni hiya sa wuyena, no waye. Ala ni minister, otumi chile chile mu, ma MPP4, ya boto ya yem. Na tu, endi si fuwa nso, osene wa omo bono, ya kaya ya nutum. Ok. Ala, wa chile gana fuwa se, economy way, wati asye, enjesu wati asye kwa. Diye e hiya se, wuye presidenta, wudi siwe niso, se wudi pia ekonome no. 
onye minister keke obe ye president ha ana obi a onya nya minister wo ni ni aba mu otumi ko state africa continental free trade e ho dwumadi yeah na mpp ni aba mu nti no onya minister mpo yeah ana obo ho modin a ni aban ya hoduo edi ho dwuma na mpp ba power 2016 obe ye minister for trade and a cracker and a main child, dear Alan to me, the Huguma man, let's see a cassay Africa Continental Free Trade Headquarters Ghana Hanewa Africa United Yenis Cassem. We teach Alan a coffer at the Abba Ghana. Now we'll be able to be and share the Africa a moon now all the African countries together Ghana back open with me. What's it? Monfa Ghana is a mess. Now we to miss you see the Ayin Yama. What to me? I say, Africa won you like the year, you want to hear ye. Or some of our garden and go on, mother. No, Miss Easy, and I'm up. Everybody was here. In your four digits, but I know we got uh, 19 uh, out of the 54 or 55 that voted. And uh, kind of disappointed, but we expected Central Region be able to up more than this. But it is what it is. Match the other regions to we are coming second, second, second. Let's just focus on why we are here. What happened to my colleague on Saturday was an act of total indiscipline and indecent behavior. How do we, as a decent party, going into an election, particularly at the level of superdelegates, superintend such behavior? I mean, look, we all joined the MPP because of our commitment to the values of the party. But what is happening clearly shows that this is not what we bargain for by joining the party. I'm not going to tolerate this kind of behavior. It doesn't make sense. And when we cannot conduct ourselves as a family, trying to select a leader, you know, in a peaceful and organized manner, how do we intend to be able to do the same kind of process when we have 230 people uh, gathered? 230, uh, 200,000 200, plus thousand people gathered, you know. So I'm uh, frankly uh, very disturbed about what has happened. Uh, the party must not put a shine on this kind of uh, incident. And we will we'll, we'll, we'll have to try and understand why, I'm so why, why this should happen. So, in an internal election. Yeah. Going forward, November is just around the corner. And we'll okay. Uh, what really happened was that uh, just the Saturday past, 26th of uh, this month, uh, I, I was a party agent for Chief Alan. And so, as early as 6 o'clock, I was already at the center, waiting for the delegates to come. So, whilst I was around 9, uh, 9 40, the electoral commission came and said they are, they are distance, they are twos, waiting for the delegates to come and we start. So, whilst I was there, they also came in. Uh, the one the delegate was coming, it was uh, Mustafa, the MP for Yagaba Kubori. He led all the delegates into the, 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 the center. What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief we choose whom to rob but you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you because we choose them we vote them we blindly say we are not blind who is deceiving who the ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief is it not but we fight each other to defend and protect the political team. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career.
stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. If you reach a certain stage in life and there is nobody who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth, you are doomed. And that is where our country has got into. We need to rescue this country. We are lying. And I feel very terrible as a Ghanaian at this time. This country is in serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. We are in serious trouble. We need to rescue this country, ladies and gentlemen. The presidency has been so depraved, so, so muddied, so dirty, that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian, that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallahi. Insha Allah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. Government is broke, government is broke. But people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. I'm borrow money of the future and eat it now. Right, hello, good morning, welcome to the show. This is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV. It's a Wednesday, the 30th day of August 2023. By his grace, we're live and we're here. We're here to another edition of the show. Our gratitude to go to Most High God for the rare privilege of being alive and, of course, the opportunity of having another conversation around the top stories making the rounds here in our dear Republic. I'll let you into our panel for the morning's conversation shortly. But let's take a look at the front pages of our newspapers, Daily Graphic. Country set for industrial hub, infrastructure ready, Professor Dodu. Make arable land available to farmers for PFJ2. A Greek minister appeals to traditional authorities. Graphic, carbon confer on mutual interests. Air pollution cause of NCDs in Accra. Daily Guide. IGP leak tape saga. MPs grill COP Mensa tomorrow. Man killed at Galamse site. NDC fight EC over limited registration. 13 arrested over gunshots at Tamale Court. Kennedy, Kojo Poku Storm NPP office. The new crusading guide. Round two of NPP conference. Baumia will win by landslide. Baba Awao. A coup for other commission's biggest salt project in Adan today. Invest in cutting edge maritime technology. A coup for other edges Gulf of Guinea states. YEA begins disbursement of funds to government and textile companies. Gold fields laws. Gensa Energy for providing mines with sustainable power. Angel Group goes global, ready to establish distilling plants in Columbus, USA. The insight, corruption, people's redemption movement blast NPP and DC over canker. How BRICS expansion could affect future of US dollar. Gold fuels lost Gensa Energy over provision of sustainable power to the mines. Tension brews at Osino as police stops demonstration against chief. The Herald. Bugri Nabu plays double game over plot to remove IGP. YEA begins government and textiles fund disbursement today. Land litigation deterring investors from Ghana, cries Chief Justice. One million tons from Adan Songo, 41,000 acre salt field soon. A Kufado Commission's processing plan today. Kennedy, Japan's campaign manager fires at Chiamawun to me, calls him a joker. The custodian, a Kufado opens Africa's biggest salt mine and processing plant today. NHIS to receive $27.7 million from World Bank Group. PFJ2, government to provide ready market for farmers. YEA disperses funds to government and textile companies. The Daily Statesman, be sensitive to delays in trials. President charges judges. Baumia end victory slot without me appointee push. YEA begins disbursing funds to government and textile entities. NPP neck meets today over Boache, Jaku, and Adenimo. Daily Post. Baumia told so many lies in opposition. That has now left him totally discredited. Kwachio Fosu. Presidency is corrupt. People have a kufado in their pockets. Bernard Mona. 
don't bring any confusion to Ghana. Gosu Paramount Chief slams Jemensa. Mahama promises to set up independent value for money office to scrutinize all government projects over five million US dollars. The Finder. Integrated maritime strategy launch to safeguard territorial waters from criminals. YA begins disbursement of funds to 2,540 beneficiaries today. First Lady launches unifying campaign to promote gender equality. Train students to be creators, not just repairers of machines. Education minister to TVET institutions. The Ghanaian publisher. President commissions electrochem salt mine today. Allow Adeni Moejaku to contest Kwabena Japan. Educhum appeals to teachers to support reforms. NDC to sue EC over limited voter registration. Business and Financial Times. Smallholder farming still no go area for financial institutions. 2023 Ghana Business Standards Awards. 50 companies and four individuals on it. Digitization drive hinges on public policy and political will. Margins ID CEO. Agriculture, planting for food and jobs, two to create 210,000 new farm-related jobs annually. President, as input credit replaces input subsidy under PFG1. Fintech, MasterCard advocates partnerships among fintechs, banks to expand financial services. Feature, CI122 needs clarity. And there's another feature, insights into UN SDGs, forest shrinking. Species at risk of extinction. Life on land still under threat. That must be interesting. Um, so that's about it. For the front pages, we'll be back shortly. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200 lifts and elevators the elevator people betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement a whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions all in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. Sometimes the unexpected happens and the hero falls down in his own story. But he needs not stay down for long. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance is your trusted health partner. Whether an individual building a business with Cosmopolitan Health Insurance, your medical care is our concern. For the best health insurance solutions for corporate institutions, groups and associations, families and individuals, choose Cosmopolitan Health Insurance from our over 700 accredited health service providers nationwide. Call us on 0302-540-668 or 0501-678-547 for all your health insurance solutions. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance, your medical care is our concern.
50 years of serving the world with herbal and alternative medicine, we've been successful in treating complicated medical conditions with a perfect combination of herbal and alternative methods of treatment, like homeopathy, naturopathy, reflexology, and many more. We deliver excellent and effective service to people from all walks of life through scientific and traditional means. We have a well-equipped laboratory with advanced diagnostic and treatment devices to help detect your illness so we know the right medication to be given. At Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital, we are proud manufacturers of our own herbal medication. Our zeal and passion to save lives with our patients at heart and outstanding achievements since 1996 has won us several awards. That is why we say, Go Herbal, Go Amen. We are located everywhere in all the regions. Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. Allahu Shafi, God is the healer. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Kwa, when you fear for you now, and kobo de makers in Sri Anamunde Road. The pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited am up to 67% discount. I was selected appliance assessor. This is what I call quintessential immaculability. She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samaizoko Junction. I decay pharmacy dining. Oh, yeah, I'm a man. Boga Junction. I'm a shaman. Valko Flat. Kumasi. I'm a Hinema Koko Bain. I'm a Safubwachi Hospital Junction. That's what I'm a Fia Kuma. Number nine market. Two and two man and dad. About the Makers Blessing Attack Program. From 0552 222 253. And 0552 222 254. Terms and conditions apply. The same and got to moon, I'm a sissy. Step into success with Accra Business School. Boost your career with a prestigious MSc degrees from KNUST. Pick from Human Resource Management, Communication and International Relations, Public Affairs. In just 12 months, our MBA can be yours. Dive into our BSc programs in IT Security and Cybercrime, IT Management and Business and Management, endorsed by top universities in Ireland and Wales. We offer flexible entry, payment and learning options. It's time to unlock your potential and take flight. Visit www.abs.edu.gh or dial 0263-888-555. Let Accra Business School elevate your future today. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. With me on the show this morning, I have Kwesi Pratt Jr. as the managing editor of the Inside Newspaper. Uh, Kwesi, good morning. Good morning, sir. Also with me on the show this morning, Este CEO of Valco, who's also the former member of parliament for the Tema East constituency, Daniel Nekwate, Titus Glover. Good morning. Good morning, Anete. Mm. How are you? Uh, by the grace of God. Some people say, Why do I call you Anete? I don't call you <laughs> Randy. And I say, Look, leave that for me. Because we are typical Gandangues. So I'm, I'm more comfortable 
when I call you by Annette, they say, ah, yeah. you see Randy, you say Annette, Annette. They don't know that part of you. Uh, That's it. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Well, Annette. Annette Abbey. <laughs> well, was uh, Randy is a name for donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe if I take in a uh, Chrissy's route, mm -hmm. uh, I would have discarded a... Chrissy, what was the name they gave you? I've forgotten. You've forgotten it? Mm -hmm. But they gave you one. <laughs> did, did you discard it or your parents discarded it? Oh, I think it was lost in the in, process. Uh, along you know, the way. When I stopped. Oh, you see it. Okay. Yes, but your certificates have that name? No. I discarded it before. What does your passport have? You see? You see? It doesn't have that name? No. Okay. All right. I discarded it a long time. Zumo. Okay. Rubbish. <laughs> <coughs> but the microphone cut it. We <laughs> see <laughs> <Is it> rubbish. <laughs> Okay, well, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel uh, <laughs> from the Lions Den. Anyway, <laughs> are you going to discard the Lions? There was Daniel? a time in Warwick. Yes, I was presenting a paper on globalization. Yes, on Africa, and it's a regional thing. Yes, they will call somebody from the Americas, Europe, Asia, and Africa. So I was sitting at the back. So when your name is mentioned and you are going to deliver the paper, there's a loud applause that will follow you from your seat all the way to the podium. <coughs> so it continues. <coughs> the rep from America in the class, from Europe in the class, Asia. When it got to attend Africa, when they mentioned my name, Daniel Titus Glover, so the applause was loud. So as I was going behind me, it was reducing. So when I got there, also it was a black. And they stopped. The name sounded very British. Caucasian. Daniel Titus Glover. So I asked them, I told them, I observe all that happened. Anytime they mention names of people, that plus it's so loud. Because I was coming from the back, you're not seeing me. Aren't you? What, why did you do that? I'm a black African from Ghana. Mm. My middle name is Nikwate. Mm. So I took them through lessons. Daniel Nikwa. That made me too. But you don't blame them. You were carrying yeah. a donkey's name. And I had a, I had a mate in class, Rebecca Glover, a British. Yes. Rebecca Glover. Mm. In Warwick, in class. So I don't I don't joke with the Nikwa I make sure it's all you mentioned. So you drop the Daniel. Or no, it's too no. late. No, no, it's too late. I can't drop it. It's too okay. late. I make sure. I maintain or call me over all the Daniel. All right, okay. So why don't you secure your future with the Accra Business School? And here I'm talking about higher education. Boost your career with their prestigious MSc degrees from the KNUST. You can choose from Human Resource Management, Communication, International Marketing, International Relations, Public Affairs, or IT Management. In just 12 months, the MBA can be yours. Dive into the BSc programs in IT Security and Cybercrime, IT Management and mm -hmm. Business Management endorsed by top universities in Ireland and Wales. The Accra Business School offers flexible entry payment and learning options convenient to you. It's time to unlock your potential and take position. Visit www.abs.edu.gh or call the Accra Business School on 0263-888-345 or 0263-888-666. Visit the campus at Spintex Road, Christ Square. Let Accra Business School elevate your future today. And do not let physical infirmities and aging stand the way or stand your way in enjoying your mansions, homes, and offices that uh, have those stairways that uh, are sometimes difficult uh, to use. Um, it often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use the stairways um, as a result of aging and infirmities. But worry no more because with a portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are sure of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a simple to use self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility to choose from. You may call it luxury, but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility. Do not let aging or infirmity limit you. Get one for your easy vertical mobility at home or office. 
It's affordable and can be installed within three days with modification to your building. Visit lifts and elevators Ghana at Sakumono for your solutions and free consultations. Call lifts and elevators on 0200-535-515 or email at elevatorsgh at gmail.com. And what does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember who's got a mola, got a power. Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on Adom TV at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m., daily now pick up your phones tablets and computers and download the game Pack games app on play store you can also play on their website www.gameparkgames.com or by dialing star 946 hash on all networks just choose four numbers from zero to nine it's easy to play and easy to win charlie could play this game and make some mola nobody beats our odds in ghana game Pack games more mola more power this game is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. Not for persons under 18. Play responsibly. Now, Kwezi, yes, sir. it looks like um, West Africa and Africa uh, are still quite a distance away from having some um, relative uh, peace and calm. Just as we've been discussing the crisis in Niger and uh, the response of ECOWAS leaders, including Ghana. And the fact that they, they believe that a military response is what is uh, what is important at this stage, and we've also had um, religious leaders and others saying that no, um, that is really not an option. Don't try that. Um, the French say that they won't leave, although they've been asked to leave. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but it's the first time I've heard that. Uh, been recent times, uh, diplomats saying that uh, a country saying that they will not leave when they've been asked to leave. Um, We've seen uh, videos and pictures of um, hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, Nigerians who have um, masked up at the French embassy. Uh, we are told that electricity and water has been cut off uh, to the place. I don't know what that standoff is intended to achieve, and I don't know what Francis uh, uh, Postrin also intended to achieve. But just before we woke up, we heard that it's happening in Gabon. The military um, has announced uh, that uh, about 12 officers were on TV, and they've announced that they have ceasefire power in, in Gabon. They just had elections, um, Omar Bongo's son, Ali Bongo, uh, and he was declared a winner by 64%. The opposition has disputed uh, this, this, this election. The military say they've taken over. I think in January, um, January of last year or so, there was a coup that did not succeed in that country. But um, this is what's happening in Gabon at the moment. We're here to hear from Ali Bongo and his government on this issue. So far, it is a military that has appeared on Gabon TV, Gabon 24, and they have announced this. Um, what's happening? Well, let me start with Niger and the tip between the French government and the Nigerian authorities. If you read the situation in Niger very carefully, mm, it does appear that the United States of America has completely outsmarted France. What has the U.S. done? The U.S. in the midst of all these crises has appointed a new ambassador to Niger and has actually begun talks with Niger. This is a de facto recognition of the government in Niger, you know. And that would show that the U.S. has completely outmaneuvered France, you know, in Niger. Of course, it's to be understood. As we all do know, the U.S. has the largest drone base, the second largest drone base in the world, stationed in Niger. So it has an interest there or claims to have an interest there. Again, Niger has huge quantities of uranium, which all the so-called major powers are interested in. And the U.S. maneuver, in spite of its leadership of NATO and France's membership of NATO, is very interesting. It must be studied by all those who want to understand international relations that even <coughs> countries like the United States and France 
could have divergent interests in a country. That's for Gabon. I mean, who was not expecting a coup d'etat in Gabon? I don't know of one person who was not expecting a coup d'etat in Gabon. As a matter of fact, if you look at the measures which were instituted by the government of Ali Bongo, you know, in the run-up to the elections and after the elections, they all point to panic, severe panic. And of course, I was expecting a coup d'etat in Gabon. I'm still expecting coup d'etats in four more countries. Four more? Four more countries. I think the four more countries are going to fall uh, very, very soon. Possibly before the end of the year, we should expect about two or three countries to fall. And four more countries are likely to fall in Africa, you know, to coup regimes. But hey, everybody was expecting this coup d'etat in Gabon for many reasons. I mean, one family has been in power for 53 long years. And that family has not been in power for 53 long years because it was loved by the people of Gabon. That family has been in power for 53 years because it imposed itself on the people, rigged elections, harassed opposition leaders, banned political parties, arrested trade union leaders, and so on. That's how it managed to sustain itself in power over the 53 years. And there's a point to which people say that they would not allow you to go any further. And Gabon has <coughs> reached that point, you know. So I'm not surprised at all. I don't think that this coup attempt is going to fail. I don't think it's going to fail. There are signs that it's a very popular coup. If you go on the net, and I've been on the net this morning, the signs are that it's a very, very popular coup d'etat. Now, in analyzing this coup d'etat in Gabon, I think there are a number of things that we should do. We should try and identify what is universal to all the coups. Hmm? And then also look at the specifics. They, they all do not come about by the same factors. There's the general universal things that affect all the countries and which instigate the coup d'etat, like the behavior of governments, governments which are not accountable, governments which want to stay in power by all means possible, governments which subvert the national constitution and so on. Those are universal. You can find that in, in, in Burkina Faso, you can find that in Mali, you can find that in Guinea, Niger, and also in Gabon. But there are also specifics, things which are unique to the different countries. Now, if we take Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Guinea, there's something which is specific to those four countries, and that is the Islamic insurgency. And you don't have that situation in, in Gabon. So that's an added, an added factor, you know, to the misbehavior of governments across the sub-region. Now, the coup in Gabon and other coups likely to follow will make this West African leaders, you know, threat to invade Niger look even more reckless and unrealistic. Look, <laughs> this phenomena is, 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 is going to spread. Mm -hmm. Now, if we decide to go and fight in Niger, where will the fighting stop? Are we going to plunge the whole of the sub-region into war? And if we are going to plunge the whole of the sub-region into war, when is it going to end? Now, Randy, there's, there's another dimension that people have not averted their minds to. Niger currently faces the, the, the threat of Islamic insurgency. Okay. So let's say the West African leaders manage to send soldiers to Niger. The soldiers manage to overthrow the military government and reinstate the civilian government. What happens after that? Are the West African leaders going to station their troops in Niger permanently? Or they will reinstate uh, Bazoun and leave? Now, if they reinstate Bazoun and leave, what happens to the Islamic insurgency? In a matter of weeks, the insurgents will arrive in the capital Niamey and catch the president and eat him up like sausage. 
You understand? So, that's not a solution. Now, there's something else that I think we need to look at. Clearly, these are popular coup d'etats. All of them. Niger, Benin, Mali. They are very popular coup d'etats. But we've seen popular coup d'etats in the past. Many popular coup d'etats in the past. Now, what happens? The popular coup regimes come, they stay in power usually for a couple of years, and then they go back to constitutional drafting, they draft new constitutions, we hold elections, and bring civilian governments, <coughs> which come and repeat the same mistakes of previous civilian governments, creating conditions for new coup d'etats. So there's an endless cycle which does not improve our political, economic, and social conditions. Coup d'etat, return to civilian rule. Coup d'etat, return to civilian rule. We've got to break that cycle. So we have to pay attention to what is it that will turn these popular coup d'etats into popular mass movements of the people. What is it that we can do so that we do not just state coup d'etats, bring in civilian, have transitional government, bring in civilian administrations, which go back to misbehave in order to warrant another coup d'etat. What is it that is missing in the equation? What is it that all of us as Africans, as citizens of this world, have to do in order that we shall begin to move forward and avoid these civilian coup leaders? Because all these, many of these people who, who claim to be democratically elected and so on, when you come to Black Stars, they are all cool leaders. They are not doing anything different from what cool leaders do. The same, the same. You understand? So I think there's a challenge that all of us face. Yes, Burkina Faso is a young, popular military leader. What is the future of Burkina Faso beyond this individual who is popular? Beyond this individual who is saying all the things that those who believe in African unity and African prosperity want to hear. Beyond him, what happens? That's the question, the critical question that faces us. Because otherwise, it will, be, it will happen. The, the, the cycle, you know, you state the coup d'etat, you are popular, <coughs> there is some pressure, you write a new constitution, you hand over to a civilian government, the same things that led to a coup d'etat will happen again, then there's another coup d'etat. That cycle must be broken. Now, Kwezi, the, this um, trend um, was um, a trend in the 60s, 70s, 80s, towards the close of the 90s and the 2000s. It appeared that we had only some uh, isolated cases of this nature. Now, all of a sudden, in the last three years or so, it appears that it's not becoming an isolated case any longer, but it appears to be becoming a trend. Obviously, we ought to be worried. You have predicted some more to come. Other um, watches and analysts have also done the same. In fact, there are those who two weeks ago predicted this one and it has happened. And of course, those predictions are going on. Obviously, this must be something which is of major concern to everybody. Not just the leaders, but ex especially us, the citizens. It appears that as for the leaders, if we take a course, we know what their response is, what they think is the solution is. Whether it is sensible or not, they are, they are, they are, they are entrenched in, in their view. Well, but we ought to look at the bigger picture. Now, it is beyond West Africa. And it is becoming a trend akin to some decades before. We ought to stop it and reverse it. And I don't think that it is too late. What should we be doing? Mm. First of all, the analysis we suggested that up from the 1990s, 
I mean, coup d'etats were no longer, you know, visible, or were no longer popular, and so on. It was a false analysis. Mm. This was an analysis we saw coup d'etats as an expression of the Cold War then. To some extent, they were an expression of the Cold War. You know? But that analysis then came to the conclusion that we have arrived at a stage of a unipolar world. And because we've arrived at the stage of a unipolar world, and uh, you know the Cold War being inactive, coup d'etats could not happen again. And so on. I mean, it was clearly false analysis, analysis without any basis, no empirical basis, nothing. There's those of us who believe that the 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 the, the unipolar situation would not last forever have been vindicated now. Now we have moved into an era of multipolarity. <coughs> so that argument collapsed, you know. Now, the other thing that I think is important to consider is that no government can impose itself on the people forever. No government. It is not possible. The people's will will always prevail. And the expression of the people's will manifests in several different ways, hmm, which we cannot sit in this studio and predict. In North Africa, uh, it manifested in mass protests, hmm, leading to the toppling of governments and so on. In 1917, it manifested in, in, in a communist revolution you know, in Russia and so on. In other places, it has manifested as popular coup d'etats and so on. So the manifestation is not something that we can prevent or, or even prescribe or predict. The manifestation, there's an element of opportunism in how these things manifest and they will manifest in different ways. Now for me, the most important thing is how do we hmm, respect Respect the will of the people and do things that are uplifting for the general population. If we establish governments and systems of government which fail completely to deliver when it comes to employment, if we establish systems of governments and governments which do not fight against hunger, lack of access to education and health and so on, there will always be turmoil. So we need to establish governments which are focused on the deliverables. And democracy, but what is democracy? Democracy is certainly not every four years going to the pool to cast a ballot. It is more than that. You can be going to the pools to be casting ballots every four years and our conditions of life will continue to worsen and worsen and worsen. So it's about what systems we build, how do those systems respond to the genuine needs and aspirations of our people? That's the crucial question, you understand? Now beyond this parameter, we cannot in any way ever prevent upheavals. We prevent upheavals by doing what the people want, by getting the support of the people, by, 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 by a unity hmm, between the governing and the governed. That's how you prevent these upheavals. Otherwise, we will have these upheavals, they will continue, and I know, I know as a fact, based on concrete analysis, that we should be expecting a lot more coups in Africa very soon. It appears that um, no, the trend is actually worrying and it's disturbing. It appears that we are retrogressing instead of actually making, making gains. There are people who believe that, look, um, this science was on the wall a long time ago. Things like peer review mechanisms that were put in place by the AU and others were just on paper. The leaders themselves have failed to look at themselves in the eye and speak truth to themselves in order to avert some of these things. They have overtly and covertly supported some of these actions that have necessitated these things. And it is not to justify uh, the, the overtruths, but uh, um, 
how do we deal with this issue? And how do we, we stop it? Um, Anthony, thank you so much. You can clearly see a trend. I, I, the whole picture looks scary. Sincerely, it's, it looks so scary. And I don't want to go by the tangent where my big brother went that he foresee another four more coup d'etats in, in, in Africa. Uh, as a powerful voice and, and, and an experienced journalist, I will implore to him that whatever medium that he can use to speak on some of these ills that are happening within the sub-region, we should be able to speak up on that, but not to promote any military takeovers, these coup d'etats and all that, because that is not the right way to go. But the question is, if people are becoming uh, difficult, you know, their actions and inactions are calling for some of these uh, military takeovers, then you may agree with what we see saying, but sincerely, I totally disagree because military takeovers and military coup d'etats are not the best to any sovereign country. Having said so, in the past three years, when you look at the trajectory of coup d'etats, six, six, including what has happened in Gabon. Burkina is about twice. When the Kampolo was overthrown, another military man overthrew the one that overthrew Sakara. Then came the Guinea one, the bodyguard, the ADC of the Guinean president. We had the Mali one. Then recently is the Niger one. But Anita, there's a trend that is running through. I don't know whether you observe it. The Burkina one, the Niger one, and the Mali one. Any time they succeed in this coup, you see the Russian flag being displayed. Because this is a French colonized country. In that every attempt that these coup leaders succeed, you see the populace hoisting and flying Russian flag. What signal is he sending? What is he telling us? Does it mean that they don't believe in their colonial masters anymore? And for that matter, they are falling in love with the Russian, Russian people? It is something that we need critically to, to analyze it. And to make sure that what is happening, that the people are no more interested in their colonial masters. We still talked about each deposit of uranium in Niger. <coughs> and because uranium is a very, very essential mineral, the Western world, they're all interested in it. The French, why is it that the French ambassador has been asked to leave and he's not, he's not leaving? Why? Absolute defiant that yes, <laughs> I'm not going to go. Whatever you want to do to me, go ahead and do it. it because they have as another special interest why they don't want to leave. Now they are saying that they want the power, the electricity uh, 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 connection to the embassy has been cut off. Maybe they have generator, but when the generator, uh, uh, the, uh, the fuel gas finish, we we'll see how it's going to operate it. This is not a good signal for us to look at it. I remember two weeks ago when I came here with, with him. At that time, the Nigerian government was unable to, to hold dialogue with the West, Af West, West African uh, 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 community leaders. But I saw the former head of state of Nigeria, Jiragu Baka, uh, being granted access to meet with the military leaders to engage and to talk. And I believe that that is the way they need to go. That is the best way that they need to go to engage and to find out what is the solution that is going to, to, to prevail in Niger. As we speak now, uh, Nigeria, I don't know whether they have restored the power because they give them the power like we are giving Burkina and Cote d'Ivoire from Kosovo. I don't know now that they have opened the opportunity for them to dialogue and to engage. That power has been restored so they can continue to engage. Uh, you also said that some uh, religious leaders I said that, look, uh, Ghana should not... The yeah, military option. Yeah. Military option is not the best. The last time I came, I said so. Because mm -hmm. uh, we had a Presbyterian church, we've had a Catholic bishops conference. You know, and, and these are all others. powerful platforms yeah. that when they speak, government uh, do listen. And the last time I came, I told you that 
the president is an international diplomat. He has been a foreign minister. Uh, he has sat on a Security Council where he chaired a meeting at one time. And <coughs> in doing all these things, that is trying to seek opinions of, of interested groups and all that, at the end of the day, he will take the, interest, the decision that will be in the interest of all of us. But I think that I still hold on that the military option is not the best. Why? Because we can power all our might and forces in Tunisia. For how long will we continue to be there? At the end of the day, we need to move out. And when we move out, what is the guarantee that all that has going to be done will be sustained? It's not going to help. Now, Mali and Burkina said they are sending their, what? their, their jets and other things to go and support in readiness of the ECOWAS military uh, force that will be coming there. I don't think that uh, that is going to help anybody. Now that they have given opportunity for the engagement with the ECOWAS uh, heads of state and government, for me, it is the way that we need to go and to solve this problem. Because now, most of these, they use thermal ports to, to, to import all their, their containers into yeah, that country. You know, the landlord, so the landlord country, the silent country, they use the thermal port. Most of their uh, uh, transit cargo comes from here. It means that we are going to suffer in terms of revenue. Ghana is not going to make any much revenue for that. So clearly we need to make sure that this dialogue that we want to engage should be the right way we should go to deal with some of these things. Like what she said, uh, you, 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 you stage a coup, they give a roadmap to, to real estate or you go back to democracy. After the democracy, they will come back another coup. It is not a way to go. But to answer your question, whether this is the trend that we need to go, I think it's about the leadership themselves. I remember the days of President Kufu, Tabu Mbeki, uh, the Liberian president, Johnson Salif, and then the few others. You could see that, look, these were leaders that when they speak, it resonates throughout. But it looks as if some of these uh, African, West African countries, I don't know how they do it. Look at uh, Gabon. Are you the most sensible person in this country? That from you, it becomes a monarchy. That from you, you should go to your son, then to your grandson. It's not the best. It is totally not the best. So I will not support any coup d'etat. Mm. The right way to go is through democratic process. Give people the opportunity to come and demonstrate what they think they can offer this country. But the military way to do with it. Are we, is are we, well, yeah, when I ask Kwesi about the issue of the trend and, and how it looked like it, it was no longer a trend and it was isolated and all that, I was also alluding to the fact that there is a viewpoint out there that democracies in Africa are also becoming complacent and taking a certain undue advantage over this whole issue of coups are a thing of the past, uh, they don't benefit us, they are not good enough, we will not go back to those days. And on the basis of that, uh, under the cloak of civilian democracy, engaging in coup d'etat, there are, if a civilian government decides to use numbers to amend a constitution, to extend term limits, that is a coup d'etat. The and only difference is that you don't have people wearing uh, uniforms and uniforms holding guns. To go and do those things. I agree with you, but you know, that. and that's why I raised the issue of the peer review mechanism and all that. And instead of finding their peers, telling them that look, this thing can affect all of us because as we speak today, this is a coup cool thing that we are talking about. Some of the figures we hear as to the kind of budget they are, they are talking about for this operation. Even if one dollar is not going to come from Ghana, Ghanaian lives are going to be sent out there. And the Ghanaian lives are more expensive than any $3 billion or $2.7 billion. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I do. So we are unable to tell these people, we are in democracies. We have elections and military people or security agencies are used to maim and kill people by people who are civilians and don't have military titles. And it appears as if there is a certain level of complacency. Oh, everybody now agrees and accepts that. It's a norm. No, military coups are not good. So it is not a place that we will ever want to go again. And for that reason, people under the cloak of democracy and civilian rule 
are doing things that are the same as Kuditas. And it is, I, 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 I agree. I agree. Always. I agree with you. What comes to mind quickly is the Ivorian example where Watara had to amend the, the, the constitution. The last time when I came here, Big Brother said that uh, Watara came to power by, by, by false means. And for that matter, it was, I remember it was Babu who refused to, to, to give in to the victory that Watara won. Uh, and for that matter, the French uh, soldiers came to clear him away to enable Watara who has won election but but by by illegal means but the last time you said uh, Watara what, what, came what to business has France to be in in any African oh senior Australia. please what yes. business Naturally. What, what is the authority easy, of France easy 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 cool down cool down cool down so what I'm trying to say is that clearly under the Watara for him to amend the constitution to continue to stay in power was problematic Everybody says that, look, you go two terms. You finish your term, you move quietly. You prepare the grounds for the next elections to be conducted. So if you cannot look at Anete's face, you cannot look at Nikwate's face and tell me on my face, look, Nikwate, what you are doing is not the right way to go. For all you know, they've been talking about it. But because of this sovereignty thing, yeah, we belong to a group as ECOWAS. But because you are a sovereign nation, sometimes you cannot detect you. Oh, you know they so say, why will, if you that, know, if that were the principle, I can yeah. understand what you're saying. Yeah. But the hypocrisy will lie in why you would then not allow Niger to operate as a sovereign state. Mm -hmm. Why is it that in the case of this what, 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 one, you are holding meetings in Abuja, in Accra, bringing everybody together, issuing statements, communiques, threats, whatever. If you cannot do that when there is a civilian coup d'etat, why do you do that now? Um, Why is it that in that case you will say that you are giving advice on the quiet? Couldn't the leaders also have come out to say that, hey, what is happening here is not right. You cannot do this. You cannot go and use these numbers too. That's why I said that this is a civilian coup d'etat. I understand. I understand. So you would say that and you would, like we see, say, applaud the person and go and even uh, 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 congratulate them and go and give them tacit support by being present and, no, and their inaugurations. Uh, inaugurations and all those things. And then when they are taking over, as for that one, they are taking over by military people. That one, you say that it is wrong. And in whatever, in whatever case it is, they are just not right. I mean, that's a hypocrisy. I, I agree. I agree, I agree. I entirely I agree yes. with you, the analysis you are making and all that. But the point is that leaders must be responsible. Leaders must be accountable. Whatever actions that you are doing, that it is not in the interest of your people, you need to look at it carefully. Because, you know, be as it might be, military takeover is just not right. And for you as a civilian president, also to metamorphose yourself by changing the, 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 the term limits, is equal to a coup d'etat. By even using the military to entrench you know, yourself in power. It is, it is not the best. So, so changing we need... the IGP to ensure that elections can be rigged. All those are coup d'etats. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, no, 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 no. Akufado's government has not made his mind to go and change IGP. If some people have gone undercover to go and do whatever they are doing, we have given full support. All that he's doing, nobody is holding his hand. And the government and the president give full support to Akufado's party. And it's working. Since when have you heard that interior minister or president has called him to order that mm. what he's doing, he should stop? Mm. If some people have gone to uh, hid themselves somewhere they are doing their own thing. Mm. It has nothing to do with MPP government and MPP party. Mm. So, go see, please. Mm. Don't come there. No, what are you reacting? No, no, what I'm reacting to them, what I'm saying, saying that, that insinuation, don't go there. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm saying that. Saying that so why people, are these IGP matakas? Any people. people. Eh? <laughs> regard, any people. Regardless of which party they belong to. So. Where is this coming from? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me explain my position to you. Any people. Regardless of which party they belong to, who meet yeah. huh, and who believe that if they change the IGP, they can rig elections and plot to change the IGP are plotting a coup. That's, That's what I'm saying. That's true. And nobody. So why, why are you nobody. angry? I'm, I'm hungry because in the insinuation you are casting. <laughs> which insinuation? No, no, you are the insinuation. <laughs> you haven't you heard the tape recording. I've heard which, it. Which has been not taken. Looking at when go and the, those police commissioners who went there. Was the there place. not a plot to remove the IGP so that. That is the government is not behind that. 
Have I said the government? No, no, no. You see, they should cast for me. Don't go there. <laughs> this is an old lady. Let's see. Uh, you react to a mention of dry bones. Is it in Ghana? Is it Kasanchi Lenuncho? This is an old lady re re reacting to the mention of dry bones. No, he, he can't. He Dan can't, Parry? Yes. Okay, let's Has the full let's, support yes. of the president. Let's, let's do that. Hmm. And his government? My only issue, you see, my only issue, uh, uh, this was not the, the, by something that I had said mm -hmm. when the issue of the Bugri and Abu tape came up and were discussing. discussing. I was wondering, look, the, this Papa V who is dead now. Mm -hmm. Transvantable. Like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at the the force, the time, the resources that government has spent in prosecuting them, the so-called secessionists. Mm -hmm. Look at the doctor who died recently, doctor the, the, the internet crew. Yes, uh, uh, ACP Agojo and Co. Look at what is happening, and then. We hear of this tape, and if you listen to the tape, the contents of the tape, it's pretty obvious what the whole discussion was about. And it is pretty obvious that the objective really is that, look, if somebody is not changed, uh, we will not be able to engage in a constitutional coup d'etat yeah. on the tape. Yeah. And yet, so that is why I gave those two examples. Yet, I do not see one hundredth of the energy spent on these two issues, as far as this one is concerned. You only had to take the minority in parliament, raise an issue to the speaker, for the speaker to admit for what is happening in parliament to be done. And it creates the impression as if, first of all, government doesn't think that it is a big deal. It is nothing. When you have a commissioner of police, you have a superintendent of police, you have somebody else, another police person, go to a senior party official, and you have, you have in their conversation statements to the effect that we have even brought it to the attention of the president, severally. And we don't even think, and these are serving officers. Um, like I said, I haven't heard fully. I just snipers of on social media when they are playing because I have no interest in listening to some of these things that are happening. And whether uh, uh, they said they have discussed the president, we sitting here we can have we cannot have proof to whatever they are so saying. I'm not saying that no, what they are saying is true. True, you know. I'm just so, saying that so, this is so, what they said. So for you to say that it looks as if government is not having interest in that audio compared to the energy and adrenaline that was spent in the prosecution of those essentialists and all that. I don't sit in security meetings. But Nick, I'm, I'm not saying one. this because, because the interior minister, when he, he spoke about up. this in the principal, yes. but all he said was that the president is not interested in removing the IGP. Mm -hmm. That's all he said. That there's no uh, plot by the president or the president is not interested in removing the IGP and sure. ended there. Sure. But I'm saying that you should go beyond on this tape. Look, mm -hmm. you have a private medical practitioner and an ACP who are supposed to have been on a platform discussing some things. And this is where we are. I think about four years on. There are people who are in interdiction, they are in court every day, some have died. And then you have a tape where a commissioner of police, not an ACP, a city one. Yes, a superintendent. And another police officer and a senior party official, a former regional chairman. A founding member. Well, and there are no the angle you are going. And and no, I'm just the, trying to balance. No, 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 no. I, I've, yes. seen, I've seen I've seen the, the scale at which you want to make the comparison and, and all that. The effort being made in the prosecution and the fact that all these audios and the kind of things that is said in the audio. Does not warrant any investigation from our, from government side or the national security angle or what whatever. They they've seen it. They've seen the tape. So if there are grounds enough, because you don't want to be seen to be doing something, uh, Parliament has led the way and they are doing their own thing at their level. 
and your, your worries that why is government quiet and we are not being uh, uh, effective, you know, in, 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 in a way that is supposed to have done just like we are doing for the prosecution of these guys, you know. So for me, the National Security Minister is there. It's still not late. If they think there are grounds to invite those police commissioners to justify why they said those things, why not? They have the right to invite them to question them why they did that. But now, I would have loved that those guys should have even been asked to, 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 to stay away from, from, from office whilst this investigation is going on. But I don't know whether they are still in office. Nobody's been you know, so, so if, if you look if at this, if, if, if these things supposed that they said that has been captured on audio, by this time, I would have loved that they be asked to stay step fall back while this investigation is going on. So it's still not late. They can still take the matter up and do what So I finally, you agree with me? Agamini. Finally, finally, after going round, 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 uh, you have come to agree. Anyway, let's carry on. We'll be back shortly. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement a whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions all in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. Over 18 years in business, Appointed Time Printing Limited has delivered quality service to some of Ghana's well-known brands. With our equipment capacity, we are able to deliver 1,500 pieces of polo and t-shirts in one hour. This is only possible with us. For retailers and wholesalers, we offer for sale high-quality polo shirts and t-shirts in different colors at affordable prices. We have a one-stop shop for all creative designs and billboards, 3D signages, flexi banners, car branding, stickers and posters. Locate us at the old GNTC building near Swansea Shopping Arcade, Accra. Contact us on 0501-454165, 0501-454167. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Appointed Time GH, Appointed Time Printing Limited, our printing is My name is John. And this is my long time crash. My cookie dipped in strawberry yogurt. On this scorching hot afternoon, on our way back from a long job hunt, we met this good Samaritan who offered us food. six weeks later. Yeah, a special wedding reception for our bride and groom. And there she is, my cookie dipped in someone else's yogurt. Who holds the mula? Holds the shot. Play game, games, the easiest lottery to play and win. 
four numbers from zero to nine up to three times daily to become one of our daily lucky winners. Dial star nine four six hash to play now, or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. I didn't know here. TV, fridge, freezer, air conditioning, gas cooker, washing machine, smartphone, sound system, water dispenser, microwave, blender, rice cooker, kettle, and an iron. The urban high sense smartphone is a Yeah, it is more than more than a high sense factory direct promo. It's in your mother, no, I'm a light bill. A cool first baby. Never give for four. A 28 August, I come from 2nd September. Be here with a showroom. No, said they at all. No, no, sana yet on. Wait, dear, yeah, it is so bro. So, I tell you who high sense. Everyday prices for everyday people. Do you need a place with a stunning view and serene environment? Just beneath the Green Mountains with a commercial center and recreational area with an amazing park? Then look no further. Hello, sir. Hi. Welcome to Rio Booth Havens, the most affordable yet luxurious gated community located in Damfa, Accra. We have two and three bedroom houses with spacious park. Let me show you. All of our rooms come with beautiful porcelain tiles. <laughs> Durable fitted kitchen cabinets. Constant water supply. Electricity and water 24 7. I'm what? buying this house. Hmm? Stop processing my purpose. Eh? Move it, move it. If you're living in Ghana and want an affordable and luxurious house to buy, look no further than Rehoboth Social Housing Limited. Oh, and to those from the diaspora, aren't you tired of living in places that doesn't belong to you? You can also own your house and be your own landlord from Rehoboth Social Housing Limited. I have my own. Bossu landlord. Emma. <laughs> Contact us now. Rehoboth Social Housing. Your housing dream becomes reality. Yamawa Kwaba, the ban Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories. Aha, dear, a banu case is here near Wakadia. Ubenya be a viewer. Care be an anyhow, any new here. Yansu ye will win him the four or best son, we ye are mau. Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories, ye jume did ye. A year twenty four seven oh. Ye see se wo engine, wo break, battery, yes, a son will tie. Say banu car wash, dear. Ye wo abel from Fidibiti says steamer, ye don't rock car engine, a brand soon call engine him. Ye sign ye detailing, Mitra say, ye be chuchu car no be be a mau. Ye we are, ye sign polish your car no mau, come on. And you win a monk, ye sign to car batteries, ties, rims, and if ye kick a car home. Manadum auto fix and accessories, Emma will car and see the dead them, then where you ma mau. She shall ye chill a coin what down summon, I saw it down who are any KFC boy, her name will ever cry. So open formation, and I send me say be a fresh out to Six five one nine three six nine. Now them auto fix and accessories. Who can so young quo papa pa? Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Still with me on the show, I have uh, Quisi Pra Jr. and Daniel Ne Pate Titus Glover, uh, the British, uh, uh, here with me on the show. Uh, now, I have two, 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 two messages I just want to, to, to read. The first one is from um, Chairman Paul Afopo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It says, uh, good morning to both of you. It says, I've been wondering a lot about examples we have in the world today of political systems. The West not only prescribed and imposed an economic system on us, it was buttressed by a political system. China successfully implemented its own system, and we can see the results. Africa should come up with its own system, tailored to suit Africa. Mm. Previous leaders have come up with ideas. Let's examine them, modify, jettison, come up with new ideas for our continent. There's no smoke without um, fire. And there's a... Um, a short one uh, from Pakwesi Plan. It says that 
Uh, great discussion as usual. At the end of the day, the reason for the unrest in West Africa has to do with two factors. It says foreign interest and resource aggression. We can't fall for any other narrative. That is true. Right. Okay. So, Titus, your special delegates uh, <laughs> conference has come to, I can't say it's come to an end. Okay. So, the part one um, um, came to an end on Saturday, and uh, uh, the vice president um, led. Uh, with about 67 percent of the votes, um, then we have uh, the Honourable Kennedy of Japan, then the Honourable Alan Chairman Team, then uh, the Honourable Afri uh, Akuto. Akuto, and then there was a tie uh, for fourth and fifth. Um, now uh, there are some fallout of of this uh, particular uh, one, and uh, this one says that MPP will meet today to find a solution to the tie between. Uh, Wache Jaku and Friends are there anymore in a bit to have five candidates. The two aspirants received nine votes each for, uh, in the first round, forcing the party to schedule a runoff for Saturday. Uh, the party is hoping to avoid a runoff and has asked the two aspirants to step down for each other. So far, neither has agreed. The NEC and the National Council will meet today to discuss the matter. And the chairman of the party, Stephen in team, revealed that Wednesday's meeting will come up with a decision in the interest of the party. Quote, understanding will prevail eventually for the party to move on. For the two aspirants with a tie, it is just a matter of prevailing on them if one could give in to the other. But it looks like they are all prepared to go in with full hold, so we are getting ready to meet tomorrow. Next, we'll meet followed by a national council. We're trying to find a solution or finality to a dialogue that we're having. So that's uh, the first part. Now, the second also had to do with um, a referral of uh, some of the um, candidates. Uh, to the discipline committee of the party. And the uh, spokesperson of the MPP Elections Committee, Alexander Fenyo Markin, has disclosed that the committee yesterday held positive discussions with flag bearers, parent Kennedy, Japan Vice Viral Showdown comment during the Special Delegates Conference. Uh, Mr. Fenyo Markin noted that the committee also held fruitful engagements with the nine other flag bearers, aspirants of the party in Accra. Since we had a very fruitful engagement, some agents also came out <coughs> with their reports on certain happenings, isolated cases where they had some difficulties and they had opportunity to give us a full report of what happened. We're going to meet some other members again on Thursday. And he said, we also had an opportunity to meet one of the aspirants who made certain statements that went viral and had a positive engagement with him. And I must say that so far, so good. We should be meeting again on Thursday. And once we are done on Thursday, the committee should come out and make known to you its conclusion. But so far, so good. It is, um, all is well, and we appreciate the cooperation so far, the president's president at the meeting included Kennedy, Japan, Kojo Poku, Frederick Owai, representing Dr. Mahmoud Baumi, and Anna Hinin Tufal, and Shomati, and Ken Wadmu, also for Dr. Usu Efri Akuto. The meeting was to offer the committee the opportunity to listen to and find ways to address concerns about the conduct of the Special Delegates Conference. And um, um, the Honorable Alan Chairman Tin has said that um, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and he's speaking about the assault on uh, Mr. Zakaria, who served as a North East Regional Coordinator of his campaign during the first round. Um, and the assault occurred after Ali Zakaria questioned some voters for publicly displaying their ballot papers to other delegates and recounted being outnumbered and caught off guard and becoming the target of aggressive individuals. The attack reportedly came from supporters of Vice President Mahmoud Baumia and uh, condemning the attack on his team yesterday. Uh, Mr. Chumanti said, what happened to my colleague on Saturday was an act of total indiscipline and indecent behavior. How do we as a decent party go into an election, particularly at the level of super delegates, superintend such behavior? We all joined the MPP because of our commitment to the values of a party. But what is happening clearly shows that, shows this is not what we bargained for. By joining the party, I'm not going to tolerate this kind of behavior. It doesn't make sense. It says, when we cannot conduct ourselves as a family trying to select a leader in a peaceful and organized manner, how do we intend to be able to do the same kind of process with 200,000 plus people guarded. So I'm frankly very disturbed about what happened. The party must not put a shine on this kind of incident and we'll have to try to understand why this happened in an internal election. My interest now is about the health of my colleague here. Let's focus on that. That is why we are here. And uh, this is what he said um, yesterday. Tell us your, your, your views on what is happening uh, and the matters first, arising. First, of, first yes. of all, let me commend the 10 aspirants that um, offer themselves to leave this party. And at the end of the day, we are four who have 
successfully have the advantage to continue to the next phase on the 4th of November. Then there's a tie between the Honorable Jaku and the Honorable Adanimo. That matter, next National Council are meeting today to determine the way forward. Let me also condemn that attack on the Alain Chamantin's uh, agent and, and whatever happened. This is one family, and we are conducting an exercise to elect a leader who will be prosecuting election for us in 2024, December 7th. So therefore, we don't want to be seen to be doing things that would not foster the unity and the cohesion of our party in this very exercise. So whatever has happened, um, I'm not happy. And I'm sure that is the reason why the National Party has called for this meeting to help <coughs> a resolution to it. I was in the Volta region uh, on Saturday and, and I had opportunity to observe what was going on. It was very peaceful. Myself, Honorable Peter Meru, my senior, the regional chairman, and a few other people who were there joking and sharing all kinds of jokes and all that. At the end of the day, Dr. Baumia won and he's going to win on the seventh of, of and the fourth of November. What happened on the on the twenty sixth? Exactly that is going to happen in the bigger picture. But at the end of the day, we should know that we need one another. We need each other. The victor will the, the victor will, will, will definitely need the, the 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 others to work together as as a party. But sometimes the commentaries. And some of the pronouncements by supporters and some candidates, it's something that we need to be guided. There are rules. And this is a party that is governed by rules. Before they set the, the pace for these elections, the election committee managed to meet all these aspirants. They discuss with them what they are supposed to do, what they are not supposed to do. Nobody is above the law. Nobody. From the president down to the ordinary uh, police station executive. We are all subjected to the rules of the party. So we need to be very careful sometimes the kind of things that we say. My own brother, younger brother, Hopsi Andoye, I'm told he's been invited. And I heard him talking. That our mother and the chief of staff, he, he saw the chief of staff sharing money. I mean, and the kinds of things that she said, that at the age she wants to be vice president. Where did uh, uh, Honorable Fremont Parry came out to say that she's interested to become a running mate? Where is this coming from? So I think that some of our commentaries that we, 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 we churn out must be measured, must be, must, must be messages that will, that, will, that will bring us together. We shouldn't do things that will scatter us. So I don't think that what he said now that you've been hauled before the committee, and when you are questioned to prove where you saw Honorable Fremont Parry sharing these monies, dollars, what are you can prove? What are you going to say? What is he going to say? So it is something I will appeal to him. But please, you are young, we're all doing politics. Because whatever you are doing today has, has, has a consequence ahead of you. So whatever you are doing, you need to be mindful whatever you what are doing. Do you say? To those who say that, um, you, you speak impeccable, Ga, mm -hmm. that Jatabi. Uh, How uh, would Jatabi you like? That yeah. persons like this, mm -hmm. in our recent history, they were used to, to, to spew out very spurious allegations against people outside their own party, things that could never ever be substantiated or corroborated. Now, They've brought it home. And, uh, and I, think, um, I always want to use myself because learning from my big brother here and, and, and those ahead of us, I will not speak that way. And uh, you see, uh, 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 there's a, there's a cheap uh, uh, story to do. It's like 
everybody has a name because wow. of bad or characters. Hey. So Nikwa, I will not open my mouth to say certain things against certain seniors in the society. Yes, he might have said something before, but we grow and we learn from our past mistakes. That does not mean that you should continue to live <coughs> in those things that you do. I don't think that's the best way to go. So for me, anytime I see him, I speak to him. I say, my brother, I call him Bagbalaja. Because we've been the young patrons together. Myself, him, Aduma Kubefi, uh, uh, Richie Nyama, and uh, John Kuma, and all that. So I always tell him, please be measured. Take your time. You may be angry. We may be doing something that you don't want it. But there's a way you go around it. But the moment you pour out, out and be saying things that you cannot really lay your hands on, it has consequences over your head. Having said so, then comes to my senior, uh, Kennedy's own. Uh, when I heard him saying that, according to him, from the video I watched, he said he was called that his agent has been walked out of the venue of the elections. So he's going to show, give a showdown to the president and, and, and the vice president. So the showdown, I'm yet to know what kind of showdown he want to give to the president. In any case, Mr. Kufado is not part of these elections. He only went to the party headquarters to cast his ballot and, and leave. So all that he is saying that uh, is an establishment candidate, I don't get it. I don't know where this is coming from. President Kufado has not threatened anybody not to support any candidate. He has not stopped anybody not to support any candidate. You have the choice. Those in his government who are supporting their candidate, he has not threatened anybody. What means you are the other one? Jachu and your telly, your telly, the whole thing. Anyway, Jachu and your telly, your telly, the whole thing. You are Jachu. If you, your message is not going well, accept it. If delegates are not resonating with you, accept it. And let's deal with the messages and how what you want to do differently. I love Kennedy Japan. He's my senior. You understand? When you listen to some of his message, are so powerful. But out of anger, you see, if you are angry, there are certain things you say and later you regret. I felt very worried. In that pronouncement that he made that he's going to give the president showdown, he's going to give the vice president showdown. What kind of showdown? The president the vice, what kind of showdown are you going to give them? I think that that statement is not right. And knowing the relationship he has with the president and the vice president, you should not use these elections to mar the relationship that they have together. So I will, I will appeal to him to retract that statement that he made and render some apology to the two gentlemen because it is in a bad taste. You may be angry. But that is not the way we have to go. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mm. Hmm. Special delegates conference, super delegates yeah. conference. I mean, look, from the very beginning, many of us made the point that the prediction of a 95% win for Baumia was totally unrealistic. And we made the point that he will struggle to get 70%. Indeed, the outcome of the Special Delegates Congress confirms that he did struggle to make a little over 60%. Now, clearly, it's also quite obvious that this conference was made up of the elite of the party, what some people have come to call the establishment. And has been demonstrated clearly also that what the elite of the party want and think may not be the same as what the grassroots want and think. So eventually, what is going to be important is the November 4th you know, Congress, which is going to involve, unlike this one, which had only about 9,000 or so people. 961. Sorry, 961, thank you. That is going to have more than 200,000 people participating. Now, if you take the 961, in terms of research, in terms of 
opinion polls and so <coughs> it's not even a good sample you understand so it really doesn't mean much so we are all waiting for november i've heard many people say that there are no surprises in the outcome i think that there were few surprises in the outcome one of the surprises in the outcome was the performance of Kennedy Ohini Ejafon. Many people before the conference had placed him third. He came, he found himself placing second, and that was surprising for many people. I was surprised by that too. Now, the other surprise, I think, is the performance of uh, my good friend, Adai Nimu. <laughs> I mean, and Adai Nimu, this is not the first time he's surprising everybody. He keeps surprising everybody. I mean, he's never given a chance. But somehow, somehow, he always finds himself, you know. And now he's placed fifth along with Boachi Jaku. And hopefully this weekend, there's going to be a contest which will select one of them. I that think is if one does not step down. It doesn't appear that any of them is going to step down. I've seen a statement from Boachie uh, Jaku, and there's no indication that he's going to step down. I know I died him so very well that I think I can predict that he's not going to step down. You know, so there's going to be a contest on Saturday. There have been some discussions as to whether the full 961 persons should be reconvened in order to vote on this, on this, on this tie. And some have said, said that it is not necessary and that the national executive should do the selection. Is it what is necessary or what is the law? Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know. So we are waiting to see what the national executive committee... Well, I thought that Professor Okwe was quite clear. He has been very clear. He said beginning. that this is what the law says. If yeah. there's a tie, we must vote again. Yes, yes. yes Unless yes. one drops out. Yeah. But the others who have suggested that it is not necessary and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. But in the end, we will see what happens. Uh, then, I'm sorry. Oh, carry on. No, 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 and there are many problems. You see, it had been decided that the practice of showing your ballot after you have turned printed it should not be allowed. And that anybody who did that, uh, the vote should be discounted. So far as we sit here, it is only in Kumasi or Ashanti that I know one person's vote was allegedly discounted. What about what happened in the Northeast? There are credible reports that in the Northeast, people were, were, were voting and showing their votes. What happened to those votes? Now, the people who did that, have they been summoned to the disciplinary committee? I saw a list of persons who have been summoned to the disciplinary committee. I think four persons from the Alan Tremartin campaign and then uh, Kennedy Ohini Ejapon. And I was wondering, what about all the others who beat up people, huh? who showed their ballots and so on? What, what is happening to them? Why is Hobson Adore being dragged to this very committee when people who actually attacked agents or some of the aspirants were not dragged to the disciplinary committee. I cannot understand. Now, you have a case where 961 hmm? persons are voting in an election. 961. Now, this 961 represent the elite of the party. National executive, parliamentarians, constituency chairmen, members of parliament, and so on. They are voting. Only 961. And there is this level of violence and indiscipline. 
Only 961 of the elite, what some people call cream de la cream of the party. And there's this level of violence and indiscipline. Now what is going to happen when 220,000 Uh, come together in the ordinary delegates conference. What is going to happen? <coughs> I mean, it's 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 worrying. It's very deeply, you know, worrying. The other thing, which for me, it's also quite worrying, is the regional and ethnic dimension, which has found its way into this selection process. And I'm I'm really really very worried. You understand? One, you have uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, whose campaign simply is that he comes from the north and that it is time for the northness, you know, to emerge as flag bearers of political parties and so on. And that's a message he has put so very strongly, you understand. Now, I'm worried about that on two counts. One is the fact that this level of regionalism is not healthy for any country. Any country which pushes this agenda of regionalism is likely to face severe problems going into the future. And I'm very, very uncomfortable with that. Now, the second one is just principle, consistency, and so on. Mm -hmm. Not too long ago, there was a president from the northern part of this country. And Dr. Mahmoud Baumia did everything possible to remove that president from the northern part of the country. If his argument is to hold, if his argument that this country now needs a Nordner as president, why did he spend so much effort removing a Nordner as president? I've already said that me, I don't care what region anybody can so It shouldn't become a criteria. But if you make it a criteria, there's got to be some consistency. You understand? I don't find that consistency. Then there is this uh, call on Kennedy or Hine Japan to appear before the disciplinary committee. And from all the indications, He's being asked to appear the disciplinary, before the disciplinary committee on account of what some have described as his outburst, in which he said that you have a showdown with the president and a showdown with the vice president, and that he's not afraid of anybody. And I'm sitting back and I'm wondering, what is the offense in there? Showdown, what does it mean? Where is the offense? I'll have a showdown with the vice president. I'll have a showdown with the president. Where is the offense? Maybe the basis for the threat of the showdown. What's the basis? That, that, that he, he claims, make a claim to the effect that his uh, agent has been driven out and that they are responsible for that. No, action. he didn't say that. No, that is why he didn't he say that. Give them the showdown. No, he didn't say that. I listened to him very, very carefully. Yes, he didn't say that the vice president or the president was responsible for driving his agent out of the polling station. Mm. What he said was that, look, I'm going to have a showdown with the president and the vice president. My agent has been driven out of the polling station. If you want to make the connection, it's up no, but, to you. Because the point I'm but he didn't is that say why that. will he mm -hmm. say that he would have a showdown with the two personalities? Mm -hmm. And the reason for the showdown is that his agent has been driven out. No, he didn't say that it was a reason. He didn't. To be fair to him, he didn't say that. No, but he, he I mean, because for anybody who watched him, mm -hmm. the reason for the showdown is because his agent had been driven out. That is your conclusion. He didn't say that. So what else could have been the reason? It's up to him to say what the reason was. Well, you are concluding for him, he didn't say that. Well, you understand? I mean, in this process, I think that we ought to be fair. That, that thing, that thing, you understand? Maybe we should watch exactly what he said. Okay. Yes. What a
this country with your name. President Akufo, member will show down. Vice President, member will show down. So, Muma Chesi Mimi agent. I'm not going to shut them. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Yes. Mr. Yami, I challenge the President to go for any time. In this country, Mr. Yami, in this country, Mr. Yami, President to go for any time. All right, so, so we, we want to... Randy, yes. you are right to the extent that you made the connection. You're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it still comes down to the showdown. Yes. What is a showdown? Yes, yes, yes. yes. A showdown in any contest would simply mean stiff competition. Yes. You understand? So I'm still not sure why this would go to the disciplinary committee. That, and that's uh, why I, I suggested that maybe it could be, it could be um, accusing them of being behind the action against his agent. Maybe that is the reason. But of course, it, otherwise it won't make sense. If he says show that, what has he said? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's the point I'm making. If he says show that, what has he said? But even the accusations. This is the only accusation which has been made in this, in this context. Not at all. So why this? Not at all. There's so many other allegations. Which in fact, even made. in the course of the, the campaigning, the things that have been said. I'm exactly. Saying, uh, so wh wh why why zero in yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on him? You know, is it because he mentioned the president and the vice president? Exactly. Uh -huh. You know, and and I think that one of the major principles that has to be upheld at all times is the equality of membership in any political, or in any democratic political organization. The principle of the equality of membership needs to be upheld. But be that as it may, he has been there. There is also this gentleman who's seen Adoye. And yesterday I read the statement that he had made in one of the newspapers. We simply said that, look, all of us bribed delegates. All of us paid money, you understand? And actually said that he'd be a hypocrite if he said that his side did not pay any money. But then said that the, the quantum of money which was paid is the problem. Some paid more than others, and so on. I would have taken this quite lightly. You know, I would have taken it quite lightly. But that also went to the disciplinary committee, where more grievous cases of assault and, and, and so on did not go to the disciplinary committee. We are waiting to see the outcome. Significantly yesterday, none of the people who appeared before the disciplinary committee was willing to disclose what had taken place there. <coughs> so we don't have a full picture of what took place there. But eventually we'll get to know. I think that finally, finally, bottom line, November 4th will decide. Mm. But it's important for the MPP to realize that there is a three-stage process First stage is where you are selecting your five who will contest to become the flag bearer. Second stage is where you are selecting your flag bearer. And the third stage is December 7th, 2024. Mm. Now, there has to be a link between the first stage and the last stage. Otherwise, you miss it. Mm. Because it is possible to elect somebody who is very, very popular in the new patriotic party who will not make it in the national elections. And if that happens, you don't have provided a link between the first stage and the last stage. Now, the important question for me now is that what is happening? What is happening is that the parties are choosing people who are presumed to be the persons who can help us huh, realize our aspirations, who provide for our needs as a people. That's what we are choosing. Nothing less, nothing more. And that should be the focus of this selection process. Anadi, let me quickly yeah. react to one or two that Kwesi had said. And I've noted it down. He said Vice President is doing travel campaign. He said that. And he went on to say that he removed recently a Northern President. 
which which I totally disagree with him. I didn't say who, who, that. I didn't who, say who, who, any who? of the two things you have said. said you said the no, vice president. No, 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 the no, vice no. president Listen. is doing tribal politics. No, the 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 regional. The, the, no, no, no. Re, 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 regional perhaps, and regional. tribal are He's not the same. Let and me, then let, secondly, I didn't say that he removed a president. He doesn't have the capacity to remove anybody. He said, what did he do? He campaigned any... against somebody. But there is a political contest. So, no, so but you were but, quoting him. No, no, so, but that's what I said. You said campaigning he campaigned against somebody. No, you didn't use the word campaign. You said he removed a northern president recently. Mm. That's the word you used. Mm. He, he so if have, now you are changing it, then that no, is fine. I'm not changing it. He doesn't that, have I, the capacity. I noted it. That's I want to correct it. Mm. He doesn't Senior. have the capacity. To that is why you, what that's what you said, and I noted it. Right. No. So now you, you want to correct it. Correct it. No, I'm not correct. So fine. So now you've changed it. I haven't changed it from from from. Uh, 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 removing a not that president mm. to uh, uh, political campaigning. That mm. is a contest. Mm. They are from two different political environments. Mm. So there's nothing wrong about it at all. I mm. belong to Baumian's camp. I mm. campaign for him. Any time he mounts the platform, he never speaks about tribal politics. Mm. Not at all. Mm. Look at what has happened in the results. Mm. And because he said what? <coughs> because it's elite. So this, uh, this, is no, this is not going to reflect in the, in the November 4th. You see what is going to happen. But the point is that NDC does two politics, religious politics and tribal politics. But they call, didn't they call us a camp party, a Sandy Four party? When they go to the north, they say, we are, we are a camp party. They come to Volta region. They come to the Zongo. What Dr. Baumia has been saying, and his contribution in our politics, as we speak from 2008 until 2020, is unmatched. From, two, from, from 2008 mm -hmm. until 2020, Northern Region alone, hitherto, was 31 constituencies. Mm -hmm. Currently, the main Northern Region today is 18. Mm -hmm. From Kwandai to Wulensi to Bimbila to Yendi to Gushegu to Karaga to Nantong to Zab Sabuba, Zabzugu, Tatale, Myong, Kumbungu, Tolong, 18. You go to Northeast, Chiruponi, Bunungu, Yonyo. Narugu Gambaga, Walewale, six. Mm -hmm. Making 24. They come to Savannah. Mm -hmm. Bole Bamboy, Solatuna Kaba, Damango, Daboru. I'm coming. Forward. Cool down. Please. 31 constituencies from 1992. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up to 2008. We are only four seats. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you the reason why I am saying that Dr. Bamia is a threat to the NDC and his big brother John. No, I'm not talking about NDC. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You, you are saying that. Me wrong. Oh, senior. Cool Tatos. Down. Not Tatos. Tree. You are saying in, that he's doing right. Religious politics. Religious politics. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you the reason why Dr. Bamia is a threat to the NDC. Because the North, JDM and the NDC know that their grip of the North is not like before. Today it is 16 against 15. It tells you that his individual contribution in the politics of the North is changing. That's what I want to establish here. Okay. We are not doing tribal politics. Fantastic. Look at the way they voted in all the regions. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what is going to follow on the 4th of November. Fantastic. Right. Fantastic. But, but Randy, yes. that's, that, that's the point. Yes. And I'm really alarmed. Mm -hmm. You understand? You are free to do your NDC MPP politics and count numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the national interest. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you're looking at the national interest, any politics that divides this country on the basis of where candidates come from. But Bobby has not divided the country. Hold on, hold on. But that's what you just did. No, but I'm saying he has not divided the country. That is it's what an you amalgam just, of I all the regional votes. Can I finish? Can that I is finish? it. He's not doing any tribal politics. Any, Look at the candidate votes. Any, Look at where you are. And it's going to reflect throughout. Fantastic. Any politics we divide this basis, this country on the basis of tribe and region is negative. And I don't care whether it is advantageous for NDC or it's advantageous for NPP. That's not my concern. That may be your concern. My concern is about achieving national cohesion and doing politics that's about bread and butter issues, kinky and fish issues, rather than where the person comes from and so on. That's my politics. Now, now, see, just, just, yes, just let's so wrap up. So the 18 and 6 and, and 10 you are let's, counting let's, let's, doesn't let's, change let's my wrap position. Up. Let's wrap up on this. Um, the Electoral Commission yes, is um, yet uh, again uh, embroiled in uh, a controversy.
And it is so because um, on the 17th of August, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, uh, Mrs. Jimenez, uh, announced um, that a, registration, a limited registration exercise would uh, commence on the uh, 2nd of, no, 12th of September, and actually, um, no, 17th of August, actually, and then on 2nd of October. And she added that the exercise will be held at all the 268 district offices of the uh, EC across the country. And it says that it will afford Ghanaians who attain the age of 18 years since the last registration of 2020 and others who are more than 18 years for various reasons couldn't register the opportunity. And um, the paramount chief of the Gosu traditional area in the Ahafo region, Anakwesi Bosumpra the first, has slammed uh, the EC chairperson about the decision to hold the registration only at these district offices. According to the Gosu Mahini, the decision of the commission will end up disenfranchising a lot of Ghanaians because people who live in areas far from the district offices of the EC might not have the means to travel to get themselves registered. Nana Kwesi Bosumpra, the first who made these remarks at an event to mark the 15th anniversary of his installment at Gosu on August 27, um, warned uh, Mrs. not to bring unnecessary confusion to the country. Quote, what is our mother Jimensa doing? She has been to Afo before. She knows the towns that are after Sumira. She knows the communities that are after Kasapin. So if these people are to register, they should find three people who will be their guarantors. And the person will have to transport all these uh, people to the district office of the EC at Gosu. Are you going to give them transportation? He quizzed in three. The chief told the EC boss to take steps that will ensure peace, saying, I'm begging her. She should look at how Mary gave birth to Jesus. Uh, for us, she shouldn't let any confusion before this country because of a woman. He begged her to receive their decision and ensure that the registration of voters is done at centers close to communities. Uh, that's him. We've also seen uh, the Coalition of District Assembly as parents. They also are asking the EC to rescind this decision uh, uh, and, and rather decentralize uh, the registration exercise. They say decentralizing the exercise to the electoral level will enable massive participation while lessening the burden on people having to travel miles to the various EC district offices to enable them partake in the exercise. And um, I've also seen a story attributed to the NDC, uh, page three of the Ghanaian publisher. It says that the NDC is considering a legal suit against the EC over its decision to go ahead uh, with the exercise uh, at its district offices despite concerns raised by the political parties. Earlier on, we had uh, a number of political parties who said that they were at IPAC, they met with the EC, they raised those concerns. The EC said it would get back to them only for them to hear of the announcement the next day. And they held a presser. We have all of the PPP, CPP, uh, APC, um, all put together. And according to the Director of Legal Affairs of the NDC, Godwin Edwidji Tamaklo, it says that the EC is applying the same law to only limit the registration of district offices. We'll explore the available legal channels to ensure that we'll get an outcome um, that will allow the elections to be more decentralized. We want to ensure that all our MPs are duly protected within the confines of our law. We'll definitely do uh, uh, that. Now, I just want to show you the portion of the law that deals with this whole registration um, exercise. So just put it out um, um, for, for you. Uh, okay. And, uh, okay, so that's, that's what it is. Registration centers and electoral areas. It says that the commission shall designate registration centers for the purpose of registry, registering voters and may designate any place it considers appropriate as a designation center. That's the B. And then uh, it says that in uh, designating the place as a registration center, the commission shall take into consideration A, the suitability of the place for use as a polling station on election day, and B, the accessibility of the place to prospective applicants for registration. So these are the parameters. So what it means is that as far as the EC is concerned, um, it considers the place suitable uh, for use as a polling station on election day. And also, it believes that the place is accessible uh, to prospective applicants for registration. And I'm sure that the B is where the political parties and the assembly members and the chief are all speaking about, the issue of accessibility. You see? Accessibility and proximity. Yes. No. Well, I mean, this matter is so straightforward, you understand. The EC is enjoined to make sure that it facilitates 
the participation of all qualified Ghanaians in elections. And I think it's reasonable to assume that the EC has a responsibility to lessen the burden of voters to the extent that is possible and desirable. That's all. That's what the chief is talking about. That's what all the others are talking about. And I don't see how anybody can raise any ag argument against the duty of the EC to make sure that polling uh, stations or registration centers are accessible uh, and to consider the proximity to co uh, uh, communities and so on. These are all valid arguments. And I don't see how anybody can argue against that, you know. We have been talking about the issue of continuous registration over a long period of time. And I, sometimes I just wonder why we are still where we are today, in spite of all of us having agreed on continuous registration as a panacea, you know, to, to the current uh, difficulties and so on. So that's all I have to say. Mm. Uh, Anati, thank you. Mm. I think that from 92 until recently, we all know how the Letter Commission does major registration and uh, limited registrations. The limited one is conducted in their district offices all this while. Mm. Then the general registrations are done in segment, they move from one electoral area to another electoral area to make sure they be able to capture everybody. But until recently, when she sent the CI to Parliament to do this very exercise, there has been some back and forth, particularly from the minority side. Look, you need to look at this arrangement that you want to do. For that matter, there's a need for you to pull back the bricks and see that we can accommodate everybody. Uh, therefore, the position of the chief of Gosso is not a surprise at all, just to firm up to what the minority was saying at the time. The constitutional provision gives the EC the power not to be prevented from conducting its exercises in doing their work. But notwithstanding that, they are conducting elections on behalf of the people of this country. Therefore, they it's must like give the law, them. The law also gives them. I'm coming. The, the basis upon which. I'm, 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 I'm coming. Are. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. So it therefore also doesn't mean that because you cannot be subject to the control of anybody, you can you can decide to do whatever you want to do. At least you need to apply some wisdom. You need to listen to what people are saying, because for example, anything when when you are from Wichau, in Wild West. Mm -hmm. Driving from Wa to Ga on the way to Bole, there's a junction called Ga mm -hmm. that goes deep in Wa West. That's the district capital of uh, Wichau, the district capital of Wa West. And there are people living in the hamlets who are 18 years and above. For the past from 2020 to now, they've not conducted any limited registration. So it means that there are a lot of people whose name need to come to the electoral roll. And they're expecting a little over 1 million people to be added on. So if we don't do anything to really assist, if you have a challenge, you let us know. You get what I mean? If you are having funding challenge, you let government know and see what government can do to <coughs> assist you. When she announced the, electoral, uh, the, the election results in 2020, if you heard it, Anate, she said that for the first time, funding didn't come from outside sources. All the funding was provided by central government. It means that you have done something which is novel. So if today, with the limited registration that you want to do, and in any case, what you are going to do is not, is, is, is not out of the norm. It is a normal thing that they do every, any time they want to conduct the limited registration. So if you have funding challenge, share with the government and see what government can do. So they'll be able to decentralize it, even if you go at the electoral area level, so that people can converge there and do, that'll be fine. Because the machines are meant for every police station. You still have machines there. But if for some time now they are not being used, you can clean them up, send it to letter areas so that people can, at least you meet them halfway. So I think that what the chief is saying, um, it's something that EC must listen. What other Ghanaians are saying must also listen and to make sure that they rope everybody who is qualified to have his name on the electoral roll 
so that comes December 7, they have the opportunity to cast their ballot. So for mm. me, uh, I will agree to what the chief is saying, that mm. the issue should listen and let people who are due to register should mm. have the opportunity, right, and to confine them to the district capital. Mm. But distance, where do we coming from and going? Sometimes for the distance, you, can, you know you have car to go back. Mm. You can sleep until the next day. Some are crossing rivers. You go to these water lakes, you cross. There are people, I went to Dodi, a population between children and adults, over 700. So if you want somebody to come to the, the Assem group in the, in the, in the Esujaman uh, 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 constituency, he has to ply on the river there. And if a person doesn't and have... have a way to come back... If a person doesn't even have a Ghana card, you understand? need guarantees. So clearly, absolutely. So they need to convince uh, these I, I will appeal to, I will appeal to, Adukwe to, to, yes. to Adukwe to come down and to listen to what we are saying and seeing what you can do about it. Mm. I think it's all to the general good of the country. Okay. Now, T -t Titus, my only problem. Titus with Glover. You. Titus Glover, you know it. Titus Glover. <laughs> so, guys, it's okay. it's speaking with an accent. <laughs> this is not Ghanaian. Yeah, uh, it's not his fault. Titus. <laughs> Titus Glover. Yeah, it's, it's not his fault. Titus yeah, Glover. Right there, right there. Sure, is there, is sure. there, is there um, smelting plant? Yeah, so, so, Titus Glover. <laughs> Tyros Grover. Yes. Oh, they, 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 <laughs> the only problem I have with your submission is the suggestion that the Electoral Commission has unfettered powers. It doesn't. There's no institution in Ghana which has unfettered powers or unfettered independence. It is not true. The powers of the Electoral Commission and so on are subject to control by the courts, mm. and to some extent by parliament. The Electoral Commission cannot be independent of the people of Ghana. The Electoral Commission is enjoined to do the will of the people of Ghana as finds expression in many forms and so on. So that whole argument about the unfettered powers of the Electoral Commission, I think they are problematic. All right, okay. Congratulations to Eduji. He's not a legal. Director of, Director of Liga. Mm. And where is my brother uh, oh. Amaliba? Amaliba is. Has there a signed different role? Yes, he's, not, he's in charge of something else. Something yes. else. Okay. Come back to Edigi. Right. There's okay. no court here. This one, there's no court here. You can't touch it with the court. There's no court, <laughs> court in the enemy. There's no court. court. There's no 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 court. Yeah. That, that's crazy. He was a, he was wearing a three piece suit when he was writing this interview. <laughs> Which interview? We are not going to cut. We we'll come. It was a three piece suit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you. Stripe, stripe. Yes, three piece. <laughs> I'm going to call it. <laughs> anyway, good morning, uh, Andy mm -hmm. GFT. Uh, anyway, so thanks, Casey. Thank uh, you, thanks, thanks. 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 President Akufuwa, Mema will show down. Vice President, Mema will show down. So, Mema chase me, me agent. I'm not going to shut them. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Yes. I'm going to challenge the President Akufuwa at any time. Betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement. A whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life. Where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions. All in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way.
To help meet your business and private printing needs successfully, we have just the right products and services. At Appointed Time Printing Limited, we specialize in digital printing, offset printing, packaging and security printing. Our innovative designs and complete professional touch on our print products such as posters, flyers, brochures, magazines, call cards and any other print solution of your choice ensure that our customers are are always happily connected to their audience with our security printing section our clients are assured of a highly secured and confidential work process from start to finish at a point in time our prices are very very competitive locators at the old GNTC building near Swansea shopping arcade Accra contact us on 0501 0501-45-4165 Six seven appointed time printing limited. Our printing is the solution. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Kwa unu fear for you now and kobo the makers in Sudan who they will. The pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited am up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. to This is what I call quintessential immaculatability. She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samai Zongo Junction. I'm a Kay Pharmacy Dining. Oh, yeah, I'm a Fat Airman. Boga Junction. Ashaman Valko Flat, Kumasi, Ahinema Kokobe, Asafu Wachi Hospital Junction. Sakradi, Afia Kuma, Number Nine Market. Two and two man and dad about the makers blessing attack for us. From zero five five two 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 five three and a zero five five two 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 five four. Terms and conditions apply. The same in Katamuna Messis. Level 3 presents Cape Coastal Graphic to Fashion 2023. Inside and behind the Adisada School Complex. Running from 30th August up until 10th September 2023. Now, Mr. 30th August now. A big strap house party. 31st August. Fit to Fashion Homecoming Connect. And on 1st September. Party in Orange. That is the official Fashion Orange Friday after party. And on Saturday, 2nd September. It's plenty. Black and Gold Affair. Happening live. Inside Level 3. Staff Afternoon for four, I'm going to play with Hub Live. On 10 September, with live match between Manchester United and Arsenal. With live commentary from Castle F. Memphis Lane, New Bruna. Our official white party. With our surprise artists. Nice classic music to the background. Kindest courtesy. DJ Time. DJ Sketches. Suspect DJ. DJ Scotty the Junkie. And Nestle MC. MC Romeo Taylor. And MC Shitless who hold you down in a grunge style. Media partners. Cape FM. Property FM. Castle FM. And Metro TV. Sponsors. Origin. Star now yeah. for you and the main one. For inquiries and reservations, call 0244 925 Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Um, it's time to check out what is trending on social media with Desi the Star Boy. But just to remind you that the Makers Electronics Company Limited uh, still has uh, some, some absolutely tremendous discount packages for you on selected electronic appliances from brands such as Samsung, LG Moved, Nasco, TCL, Media, and Toshiba. Uh, these are quality but affordable two-year manufacturer defect warranty. So simply visit the showrooms of the Makers Electronics Company Limited at Taifa Burkina Highway, Amasaman Zungu Junction, or Yarifa Tem and Boga Junction, Kaswa New Market, Ashaman Valko Flat, Kumasi Ahinima Kokobin, Takradi Fie Kuma Number 9 Markets. You can also reach the Makers Electronics Company Limited on 055 or 
0550-5522-2224. The Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge of quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Terms and conditions do apply. And are you ready to get way more back with Betway in the new season? Use the golden booking code that you can find on the Betway site and place your risk-free bet from the 25th to the 27th of August. Guaranteed to give you 100% back as a free bet up to 50 cities if you lose. This is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana and is not for persons under the age of 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway, bet your way. Let's see. Look, Mwe. Huh? Ofane Mwe. Huh? Ofane Mwe. Oh, I got to correct you. Welcome. Welcome. Huh? So give welcome in Ghana. And that is what? Hey. Mwe. Eh? Hey! <laughs> Who is setting you up for distraction? Oh, no, can I hear that? Who is setting you up for discussion? Oh, I did a few, you know, consultations. With who? Oh, with some of my Ghana people about okay, workers. I wanted to welcome you, especially in Ghana. And that's what? Mwe, mwe, You see what your hair is doing to you? That's what I mean, mwe, you are welcome, you are welcome. Boom, mwe. Anyway, who did this to you? Who have you offended? Oh, no. oh my teacher is watching it. My guy teacher. Who is your guy? No, who touched you there? Who is that? Niyama. Niyama. I'm going with Niyama. Eh? I, I consulted him. He hates you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, has hey. a, he has a beef with you. That's how people call it, a beef. Yeah. I think he has a beef with you. But don't get more than that. Find out what it is. That's how it's pronounced. Eh? Yeah, maybe I'm not a man can you. Uh, anyway, if that is where he taught you, then he has issues with you. I'll, I'll go for review. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get on social media and find out what people are saying about the show today. Mm -hmm. As always, you can join in hashtag Good Morning Ghana or hashtag GMG at Metro TV. You can tweet at us and also at Abby Randy or at myself, Desi uh, Fading on Twitter and of course on Facebook also. So let's get into the comments. This one says that with. Uh, okay. Uh, so possibility become impossible, impossible whereas, whereas the alternative okay. is same ghana okay. is now a waste no one can do better so we have to focus on doing something for our individual selves my heart weeps for our lovely nation yeah so that's from lottie jones but look this morning yes. i go to what i'm seeing gabon trending yes burkina trending togo is trending yes and i think they have one thing called they also be french okay yes but the gabon in there be straightforward uh, a family that has been on for almost 55 years. Actually, 53. 53. From Omar Bongo to Ali Bongo. Mm. And the people said that enough is enough. And they are the only two Muslims in the family. Oh, okay. They were those who converted. They were not originally Muslims. Oh. Yeah. So Ali was called Alain. He was okay. Alain. That was his name. Alain. So he and his dad converted to Islam. To Islam. So his father became Omar and he became Ali. Ali. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So now let's let's take the, the um, comments on Twitter um, about. Okay. So this one says that a Metro TV West Africa Association coming. Uh, watch out very soon. It is. Is it in the pipeline? Uh, someone is asking. So I says just look at the enjoyment on the faces of the these people of Gabon. If truly you are good to them, why shouldn't they? fight the military or why should they fight the military and demonstrate that they want you back this will let you know that they didn't even vote for ali bongo okay moving on prince henry says if people are being beaten in an election with just less than thousand people then the future is pregnant come november 4 the npp should forget about breaking the eight simple or simply because the center cannot Hold, okay. And after making a monster out of Kenny Japan by hailing him anytime he insults or threatens others, today they are saying he doesn't have emotional intelligence. He has promised them a showdown, and he will surely give them 
the showdown and uh, yeah, showdown was trending from yesterday and all that so that's uh those are some of the comments coming in now let, let's look at gabon and some of the comments um about what's happening in the country this morning some people happy about this one says next is cameroon and senegal west africa had uh, has had enough of french senior colonial rule well done gabon this one says that badly wants equatorial guinea free like gabon and other african countries were getting their freedoms. That's from Oluwagbenro. And Don Capsi says the uh, vestiges of uh, African pseudo democracy is collapsing country after country. Strong men <coughs> who weaken institutions ruling with impunity and disregard for the rule of law are being forcibly removed from power. Finally, Gabon have been liberated from the bongos. Who is next? Hmm, that's a big question. Who's going to be next? Look, so we are counting and going. Why are we here? There's a hypocrisy of the African leadership. Mm -hmm. They can never look themselves in the face and the eyes and say truth to themselves. Yeah. yeah. So you see the video where they've they engaged in, mm -hmm. in a lot of um, civilian constitutional coup d'etats under the guise yeah. of democracy. You know, I mean, these things should not be happening and it shouldn't happen. Yeah. Yes, but um, we should stop also taking the people for granted and taking things for granted. Sure. You understand me? Sure. There's no difference between a civilian who uses the military or the security agencies to perpetuate him or herself in power or uses the constitutional numbers mm. to change a constitution to keep him or herself in power. There's no difference between that act and people in uniforms taking guns and toppling a regime. The only difference is that you have one being done by civilians and one being done by trained military officials. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you show your screen the, the, the Gabonese people celebrating or jubilating that. Um, have you ever been to this Gabon? Happened. No, but I have friends from Gabon. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. I've been there. Oh. And it's a country where it looks like the resources of the country are actually in the hands of 5% of the country. The country. Yes. And uh, <laughs> really sad situation, but um, hopefully it gets better. I don't know why people are calling on Burkina, uh, on Togo, and Ka please. It, well, we'll wait and see what happens. You know, people with that. ought to. Yeah. We all need to sit up mm -hmm. and be able to look ourselves in the faces and yeah. speak the truth. Yeah. You know, we ought to do the things that are right by our people. Yeah. If things are difficult, our people will appreciate it. If we are being honest, we are being truthful. Yeah. Do you understand me? The level of arrogance and the level of hypocrisy involved in how leadership runs on this continent is just uh, it's, it's nauseating. It's nauseating. The hustle is for hmm. real. It's for real. Well, I'm sure as the day unfolds, a lot of that will be coming. In. Join us on our news meet for more of uh, that at 12 uh, p.m. Well, let's, Thomas Party was trending because his teammate Zinchenko says that Party is the most underrated player and the best holding mid footer he's played with in his whole career. I don't disagree with him. Ah. Mm. Zinchenko. Yes, I don't disagree so. with him. Because, first of all, um, Pate is an exceptional talent. He mm -hmm. has demonstrated it at the highest level. At, in the La Liga, in the Premier League, he's done that. Yeah. And Zinchenko also is speaking within a context. He says in his playing career. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, I mean, undoubtedly, I mean, Pate is top, 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 top talent. I mean, okay. he's had um, some um, downs, uh, but that's, that's very normal, especially with injuries and, all, injuries that. and all that. But nobody can doubt the exceptional talent, talent. and ability of Thomas, Thomas. Patti. It's, it's, it's without doubt. Okay. All right, so Thomas has also been training. But, Doc, as we wait for November 4th for the showdown, I didn't know that Honorable Ken was looking for a running mate, but someone has offered herself. To be running mate. To be running mate for Kenny Japan. Okay. Can you guess? Um, no. Okay. Let's watch the video. For the sake of Akunana Wopa at Sanasum, Honorable Kennedy Akumprekun, God has revealed to me to tell you this evening 
If you want to be a president in Ghana, take me, Agrada, as your running mate. For me to support you. Famina me mo wechiri dom. Ya be fuck with me on the one. This will be proper showdown. <laughs> Left, <laughs> right, center. Get out of my studio. Let's get out. Let's get out. Let's get out. Let's get out. Oh, no. She wants to be Just get out of my studio. Oh, no. She wants, she wants, to, she wants to be running with. Hey, can you imagine? Arabo, eh, eh, super tag team. <laughs> anyway, let me go. Right? Uh, this weekend, it's a fashion. Live on Metro TV. We're bringing to you everything happening in Cape Coast this weekend from the first to the third. <laughs> so please, join us. And we've got loads of amazing stuff coming in from the um, Orange Friday jams. You should see that. Super amazing uh, throughout town. In fact, Orange shirts in Cape Coast say, we some book. So go look for your orange shirt. We are coming to town. Friday, we do the Grand Derba. We do some parties. And then Sunday, we do a Mutual Fufu uh, special party. Then we do the Astral Manu game. We'll pass by the Dream FC and the other game to see what's happening with that. That will That's happen. A super in, cup. Yes, Super Cup. That will happen in Cape Coast also. And then the evening is that important party with Samini. All white. Official all white party with Samini. Live on Metro TV. So do join us for that. And of course, on Original TV and Original 91.9 9 FM, we'll be there. So, so you're welcome like, to my hometown. Enjoy. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Okay. So I'll host you. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. That will be a proper host. <laughs> you bring your running. Will you bring your running mates? <laughs> I have a lot of running mates. <laughs> you have a lot. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. From the horse's own mouth. Uh, That's just. No, I'm talking about in house running mates too. Oh. They are just. <laughs> <they're not clean>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that running mate is everyone, everyone. But for the context of this production, it will be that. It will be in house running mates. It will be that running mate. Oh, if I run, you will run by my body, so I can him. We already run together. Who be that? Oh, you know, you know your body. Eh? You know your body. Oh, don't come here, you know. Who? I mentioned thousand times for years. Who come here? Eh? Don't go say. Who come here? Oh, yeah. We'll go to Kumasi too. We'll go to Kumasi too. Two. T O O. We'll go to Kumasi too when it's a question day. But this one, there is no Kumasi. Oh, it's, it's Kumasi, but I see. So okay. you have decentralized your wishes. <laughs> no, <Anyway. laughs> you are just like a long distance driver. <laughs> Everywhere you get kitchen. Anyway, so I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Up next, Metro Sports. <laughs>